Um, you know, I was just sharing uh, just part of what I do to introduce the, the day's prayer uh, and the word intentionality. You know, I shared a bit about that, I think, earlier in the week. You know, I was just meditating this weekend and, and there's something happened that brought you know, fall into my heart because I had, I had my sister share it on Sunday and she was talking about um, Anna and Penias, right? Anna was comfortable even though she didn't have a child. Our problem was not, was, was not that she did not have a child. She was okay because the husband loved her and the husband expected that his love would be more than the, the vacuum of not having a child. And Anna was okay. Anna was okay in her lack because she had something that filled the gap of her lack. But something in her life made that thing that seemingly filled the gap in her life not to be okay. And that was uh, the second wife of her husband, right? That woman became a pain in her life and made the seeming thing that she was okay with not to be okay and pushed her to press into God for a miracle, you know? And you see, Anna was okay. And God was okay also. God was not gonna give Anna a child for as long as Anna was okay not having one. God had no intention of surprising her because she was okay in her lack. But the event, of another person in her life who was a pain, made what she needed to come up the scale enough for her to press into God to get what she wanted. You know, and what my sister was just saying is just the fact that we need to be intentional in life. Sometimes we are okay not being okay. And therefore we don't live to the fullness of the life that God intends for us. And sometimes God himself allows things to come into our life to shake us so that we can go to the next level of our life. Because God, God wants to give us the fullness of life. God is not, is not interested nor is he glorified in our lack. Living little is not God's desire for his church or his children. But he says that he wants to show the manifold wisdom to the kingdom of darkness. You don't show manifold wisdom by living little. You don't show manifold wisdom by not having glory. Glory is not poverty. Glory is not living little. Glory is weightiness. It is weightiness. Glory is magnificent. Glory is plenty. Glory is abundance. Glory is life and not just life but life more abundantly. Glory is peace. Glory is rest. Glory is joy, right? Gold, glory is the fullness of the kingdom. So if, and if we live less than the fullness of the kingdom, we're not glorifying God. We're not being God's representative in this life because God's mandate is have dominion, occupy till I come. So if I'm just, uh, I'm a Christian, so yeah, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all as a lie of the devil. Right? Jesus Christ says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the enemy comes to steal, and to, to kill, and to destroy. But the enemy is not the end of our story. Jesus is the end of our story. As Papa Ege would say, Christianity did not end on the cross. A lot of Christians are cross Christians and that is less than God desires. Jesus is not on the cross. He died and he resurrected. There's power in resurrection. We are not a subdued church. We're a resurrected church. And we need to live in the power, the fullness of resurrection. The devil wants to keep us in that place of pity. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus suffered, so we should suffer also. Yes, he suffered, but he's not, he's no more on the cross. <laughs> he's no more on the cross. It was a process. That process is not ending on the cross. That process ended with resurrection, and it has not even ended. 
because he has only become the first fruit of his brethren, we would have resurrection also. This life is not the end of our story. We have resurrection all in our part also, right? But even in this life, there's glory that is meant for us by reason of our association and the reason of the fact that Jesus Christ has resurrected, right? And we need to seek to live in that power. It is available to us and we need to press into it. And sometimes when we don't press into it, God shakes us. You see bad things happen to good people. Yes, God orchestrates it to make you uncomfortable because sometimes until you're uncomfortable, you will not desire better. When you are comfortable in your lack, you will live less. So God shakes everything around you, allows trouble in your life so that you can seek for better. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm done. <laughs> Anybody wants to add anything? Go ahead. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. He always gives us the best. He always um, he desires the best for us. No matter, you know, yeah, according to Romans 8, that, you know, it's written that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. So when when even the situation looks negative, it's still working together for our good, ultimately. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Great. And to back anything you want? So, I claim success in all our struggles in Jesus' name. Amen. Every area that Amen. we already felt we are comfortable, but God is telling us, no, we need to move. The Lord will move us in his own special way and give us the Amen. peace that we need so that we'll have Amen. it all around in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I claim it. I receive it. You know, the, and that's why the Holy Ghost is here. He's here to help us. He's here to, to fill our heart with wisdom. He's here to enlighten our ways. You know, uh, we should live better than people that don't have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we should live better than people that don't have the Holy Ghost because he can give us wisdom, he can give us direction. So it's not enough just to pray. It's important that we listen to what is directing us. It's the, the secrets is bringing to our mind, bringing to our heart. He's walking in those secrets, you know, that opens the door to riches. And uh, may God give us the hear that hears and the high that sees in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great remaining of the afternoon. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Shalom.